Which vision do you see ahead for our town? And which do you embrace? And what steps would you take to help unite the town? Let's just start with the facts. New Hartford is a small rural farming community. We have very little commercial land in this town. And the vast majority of the uh, town, 90% is residential. There's very little residential development going on in this town or any other of the towns around us because most of the things that are going on is there's a scarcity of jobs in the state that's driving people elsewhere. Over the last two years, we have done uh, bent over backwards to work hard to drive and push for economic development Route 44, and you can see that happening right now. But there's really only two or three parcels that are zoned for commercial development there, and two of the three right now are being developed as a byproduct of our efforts. We have a new mobile uh, station being reconstructed, the Griffin property at the corner across from Douglas Donuts is under contract, and Alan Borghese is building a four-lot subdivision on the Henry Bear parcel. That makes up the bulk of the commercial land in this town that is undeveloped. So anything else is already developed and being considered other than the Hurley property, which we have a vision for and has been rezoned by our zoning commission to consider growth in that area. And it's a great opportunity to take pressure off of the WPCA and its ratepayers who pay high rates. Any attempt to really try to turn Route 202 into the Berlin Turnpike would happen long after I'm dead. Because I cannot see us selling our soul to change the character of our, our town for something that would be spent so quickly and change the character of this town so dramatically that we would no longer be New Hartford. Route 44 has always been our commercial corridor. I believe it should stay that way. And I think we should do everything we can to maximize that. And we are doing that. And the, the shovels are down there right now. I, I ask you all to take a look and take a drive by because it is happening. The first 20,000 square foot building is being constructed right now. But I do not see us changing dramatically in this entire side of town. I think people bought with the promise of a residential area in this area. And that's what their expectation is. And that's what I will try to preserve and protect for generations to come. Well, you touched on the next question, uh, which is if you drive down 202 on Canton uh, and in Torrington, you'll see hundreds, hundreds of businesses. If you drive down 202 in New Hartford, you only see maybe six or seven uh, businesses over a seven mile period. Uh, this is prime location for some economic development. And although it may not be zoned for economic development, we control the zoning. So. Uh, what do you see 202, uh, how do you see 202 being developed? Uh, maybe slowly, but do you see that as an opportunity and would like to see that developed? I would be inclined to uh, look to the planning and zoning people primarily. I think that there are, there's talent in that group that can come up with a way to systematically lay out a plan for gradual development. I would be more in favor of a gradual development of that area. Uh, I recognize that there are businesses uh, growing that have been dotted all along 202 in Torrington, and I think it's pretty unsightly, really. I don't find that to be very attractive. I think there's an opportunity for New Hartford to cash in on this combination of beauty and a strategic location within the northwest corner. So I think working with planning and zoning and other development people, the Economic Development Commission, there is a way to probably lay this out, but I would be in favor of a more gradual growth. Once again, when you talk about the future of New Hartford, you talk about such a dramatic change, you have to talk about real life people, real life families, real life situations. The vast majority of the Route 202 corridor is owned by probably four or five families. I've sat at their tables, I've talked to those families, and for the most part, they do not want commercial development. For myself personally, we have Home Depot at the edge of town with a full traffic control light. And if someday Floyd and Kelly Harrison came to me and said, Dan, we want to sell for commercial development, that might be a place where that would be appropriate to see something a similar size that would transition into New Hartford. But any attempt to take that this side of Ramstein Road, I think would be a huge mistake for our town. I think there's an opportunity there, but a lot of people, and I don't know if Floyd and Kelly are here tonight, uh, I've sat at their kitchen table, I've had coffee with them, and the last time I talked to them, they said that they were not pursuing that option. I don't think that our town should take the initiative to 
uh, do some type of eminent domain or change their zoning on their property to, do, to suit our needs until they come and tell us that maybe it's time for a change. I won't let that happen. It's not my decision to make, but you can tell you, I'll be with the zoning board and I'll say, you know, fellas, why are we doing this? Uh, if it doesn't come from the families, it's not gonna happen anyway. But uh, the Weingarts, the Auclairs, the Kinseys, all farm their land. They're not looking for you know, a big concrete box on it, okay? It's not gonna happen probably for the next 15, 20, 25, 30 years, like I said, probably after I'm dead. So uh, I'd like to maintain that. I think we've got a good thing going in New Hartford. We've got a series of wineries that have popped up that provide a different type of economic development. Uh, Resix Farm is are really surprisingly turning into a huge enterprise. Jerem Winery, Connecticut Valley Winery. Now we have the, the Howard family on South Road pursuing a winery. We're becoming more of a destination for those type of uh, ventures. And perhaps there's some kind of agribusiness that can take off utilizing the farms. But in terms of moving towards uh, big concrete boxes, I don't think that's New Hartford. When Dan said there are no properties uh, that have been put forward for commercial development, I drove by a commercial developer's advertisement at the corner of Bernstein Road. I think it is something we need to look at. Um, I am one for maintaining the rural uh, character of our town, uh, but I do realize we do need some areas for economic development. I think the town maybe should have a referendum on this topic. I think planning and zoning is a group of very capable individuals, people we've empowered to do that job. But I think they may put that back to you, the public, to make that decision. Um, I think part of my major, a major part of my platform is engaging the public. I think the last six years has been issues of passing down from above without the population having an opportunity to weigh into that. Um, I think a balance is key. But also, I think hearing the public is key. And I think we as, as citizens and residents of this, of this town should make those decisions. Uh, Dan has, has mentioned agriculture. My family has agricultural roots. I'd like to see that as, as one of the overtones of our community. As I mentioned earlier, I think the outdoors is a very key marketing and lure to people coming into our town. So we don't want to um, hurt what I think are assets economic development along 202 is far away from some of the natural uh, assets we have like the river, but I think we as a town need to make those decisions unanimously or, or by a referendum kind of thing. Uh, next question. According to the most recent, in sorry, according to the most recent information provided by the school board, since 2002, the total student enrollment in New Hartford schools has declined a full 30%. We now have one-third fewer students enrolled, and the enrollment projections show a continued decline every year for the next 10 years. Yet the school budget has risen approximately 30% in that same period. Our school system employs five full-time administrators with salaries ranging from $100,000 to $150,000. We spend 74% of our entire town budget on our schools. How do you propose getting this kind of a budget under control, and would you support the consolidation of all three schools into the Antolini building, which could accommodate all the students in town quite easily? First and foremost, in our town, statutorily, we have a board of education that is empowered and entrusted to make these decisions. Nobody here on this table will vote ever on that decision. We may deal with the aftermath of a decision, but we will not do this. The board of education is charged both locally here for K-6 and on, uh, for Region 7, 7, 12. The fast math is this. We have nine classrooms at New Hartford Elementary and five of them are vacant. Bakerville School has eight classrooms, two of them are vacant. Up here, they've got three or four vacant. We probably have 10 of our 40 classrooms are vacant. Could we put them all in the school? I think I heard the principal say that that couldn't work the last time we were here about two weeks ago having a meeting. 
But that's not to say that perhaps one of the schools could close. Now, there was a meeting, like I said, a week and a half ago where that board discussed this issue, and they had a different proposal on, in their mind of perhaps moving administration and pre-K to Bakerville and uh, reconfiguring the schools, but they did not uh, propose to give that building back to the selectmen. The numbers are 635 kids five or six years ago down to 460 kids locally. It is dramatic. Nobody would have ever thought we would have been here at this juncture discussing, but that's the byproduct of our state's economics and people leaving. The young kids don't have the nostalgic attachment that we all have. Do I support the Board of Ed and the discussions and uh, decision to try to close a school? I sure do. I think that it's going to continue. I, I have all of the uh, analyst reports that show a continuing decline, not just in the local districts, but up at Region 7. And I support them, and I go to their meetings, and I, I try to support them in any way they can to make an informed decision. Can I tell you, it's not going to save you a huge amount of money to close one school. Because we take the maintenance money out of this pocket right now to mow the lawn, to plow it, to heat it, to do everything. And then we're going to take it out of the Slutman's budget next year. They're talking about fifty or sixty thousand dollars a year to close one school. Okay, could we convert it to another use? Maybe a community center or a senior center? Maybe rent it? Sure, we could. That decision comes after the Board of Education votes. And I support them in their decision. I have three kids. One of them's in fifth grade right here. One of them is middle school. One of them is high school. Our kids get great education. They always are ranked high. Are, these folks are volunteers, they struggle with these decisions, they want to do what's right. And I think they're working in the right direction. I'll just tell you, two years ago, we had the same question at the debate. There's been no action yet, and I know they're struggling with it, but the numbers show a continuing decline. And it is a lot of money. The local board has not been increasing like the reasons of